We have seen so many trucks loaded with water, with fuel, with medicines, with uh, food. Exactly the same thing that are needed on this side of the wall. So these trucks are not just trucks. They are a lifeline. They are the difference between life and death for so many people in Gaza. Overall, we are talking about 54 tons of uh, humanitarian supplies. This includes water, this includes uh, food, shelter, hygiene items, and um, sanitary material. Now, um, in terms of this uh, 54 tons, we are going to work through the Egyptian uh, Red Cross. So the aid is already pre-positioned uh, in the region and is ready to go once uh, humanitarian access is um, ensured. And in this regard, I'm just going to recall that, of course, we welcomed um, the positive announcements that came from both from the Egyptian and the Israeli side as to the um, opening of the Rafah uh, crossing point for uh, humanitarian aid. But uh, we also noted that um, in line with international humanitarian law, uh, there is an obligation to all parties to ensure safe and unhindered humanitarian access to people in need. And restrictions on quantity, uh, destination and categories of items are not in line with this obligation. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to be back. Um, Ambassador Satterfield met with officials from gov the government of Egypt and the government of Israel today in Israel to negotiate the exact modalities by which we can implement the agreement that the president secured. Um, so over the coming days, um, we will, I, I think what you will see, can't get in the exact timing, but we expect it to be implemented soon, details for humanitarian aid to go in. And of course, if Rafa Gate is, is open to allow humanitarian aid to go in, we will be trying to get out the American citizens who are in Gaza who want to leave. We want to see sustained humanitarian assistance going into Gaza for the benefit of innocent civilians. Uh, the exact discussions about how we implement that are exactly what Ambassador Satterfield is engaged in right now, so I wouldn't want to get ahead of those discussions. But it is our, our intention, our goal, and what we're working to secure is ongoing assistance to innocent civilians. The concern the Israeli government has, and they've said this publicly, and they certainly said it privately to us, is that any assistance that goes in will be diverted once it's inside Gaza. That there is not, a, there is not an Israeli military force in Gaza. There's not a UN peacekeeping force in Gaza. The people with guns inside Gaza are Hamas. And so Hamas may try to divert this assistance and keep it from getting to the civilians who, who it is intended for. We think that's a legitimate concern. Uh, we've made clear that this aid needs to go to innocent civilians and not Hamas. We're going to be watching very carefully uh, how it's delivered um, because we want to be sensitive to those concerns, which we share. We have made very clear that we strongly support Israel's right to defend itself. We are going to continue providing the security assistance that they need to defend themselves. We think they have a right, not only a right, but an obligation to defend themselves against these terrorist attacks. I think any country would do that. But the president and the secretary have spoken to this very clearly, that we expect Israel to abide by all uh, international law in, in, as they defend themselves. And we'll continue to work with them to ensure that they meet the highest standards. Tomorrow I'm going to send to Congress an urgent budget request to fund America's national security needs, to support our critical partners, including Israel and Ukraine. It's a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. Help us keep American troops out of harm's way. Help us build a world that is safer, more peaceful, more prosperous for our children and grandchildren. <laughs>
wait, wait, wait. 